on us, which means kids will be going back to school and some kids will be going to school for the very first time mm. out of the house. Oh, mm. that kind of school. Is that different than homeschooling? I was going to say, what? Yes. <laughs> what just happened? Going away to college. Oh. And Ron the Car Guy is here, and we're talking about some uh, vehicles that people are going to be providing, or maybe the kids have a car they're taking to school. And you mentioned that it's really important not just to send them on their way with their vehicle. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, we, we've heard horror stories. We, we've seen them over the years where, you know, kids break down on their way to college. Mm -hmm. And there's probably less than friendly people out there. You don't want them helping your kid. Mm -hmm. And, and the, you know, once in a while you'll hear people say, oh, it's just my kid's car or it's just the school car. I mean, the school car is probably one of the more important cars there because yeah. your child's in it with their stuff. And they're alone and right. they're traveling off to school whether it be you know just to Ames or Iowa City or maybe they're going out of state mm -hmm. and uh, it's important just to, to go through and check a few things and make sure they're not gonna have problems because, because let's be honest if, if you're a student chances are really good you're not gonna be right on top of the maintenance for this vehicle oh, yeah. once you oh, go to school a absolutely and you're not driving a brand new car either right um, and, and we see it here you know even in Des Moines I mean we'll we'll have you know you know kids going to, to DMAC or to Drake or something mm -hmm and the car breaks down and it, it isn't as simple as taking the car and getting it fixed i mean you know what do they do they call mom or dad because they don't know where to go and then right. the internet research kicks in then they figure out where to go and then the car gets checked out and then there's multiple phone calls back and forth and it's not a quick easy fix because there's out-of-state people involved and then how do you get payment how do they pick the car up and stuff so a lot of that can be avoided. A lot of the stuff that we see are stuff that, you know, if someone had looked the car over, probably could have been predicted. No, what are some of the things that if, if you're a responsible parent, you want to make sure that your car, your kid's car is checked out? A couple of real simple things. Got a list. You got a, oh, Kevin, <laughs> he has a checklist. And you can get this checklist at Westside Auto Pros, you, you I'm can, sure. You can, well, or any, any competent person working on a car should know this stuff. Uh, you, you know, the first thing uh, is, is have the battery tested and I know I talk about batteries a lot on this show but we see a lot of battery battery failures and we're gonna start seeing them again as we roll into the end of August first part of September because now we just cycled through a high heat period mm -hmm. which is really hard on batteries mm -hmm. and now it's gonna cool down and, and you've got that temperature change in a battery and, and, and it's really hard on it the average life of a battery in central Iowa is four years and two months. So if the battery in your child's car is more than three years old, just have it tested. That's predictable. Sure. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if it's marginal, replace it. You know, right. the cost of a battery is going to be less than the cost of a tow or a jump start or, or the headache. No, batteries, a little save, you know? yeah, batteries exactly. will last more than four years oh. and two months. There's no question about that, but... That's the average. That's the average. Yeah, okay. and for that to be the average, that means there's batteries out there that lasted eight years and there's batteries out there that didn't make it too right I mean that's the average well okay. to kind of go on what you're saying uh, for me the big thing that I had to learn very quickly is I went to school in Miami well cars react differently in humid hot weather than they do here in Iowa and I didn't learn that until you know, I went down there senior year I, mean, I, realized <laughs> that I went down there and rode my car pretty hard and it's like why is it acting this way so it is a thing to think about that even temperatures can affect your car differently oh. than maybe what they're used to driving here in Iowa and, and that's a great point that's something I hadn't even you know thought of to talk about but you know I have a friend that owns a shop in Phoenix and the average life of a battery in Phoenix is two years wow. because of the heat they just don't last yeah, yeah. so that, that's a great point you know you know when we think about going back to school we're thinking about you know, somewhere in Missouri or Iowa or Iowa mm -hmm. State, but um, you know, there's a lot of people that um, end up going to Florida for school. Well, here's the other thing, and my intern Clayton is, is sitting off camera here, but I remember at Iowa and Iowa State, the car would sit. I mean, you go put it in a mm -hmm. parking lot somewhere and it sits and sits and sits. It, exactly, Until exactly. you use it, so you need a good battery. Yeah, especially your first year. You know, you yeah. go to Iowa State your first year, you got to park over at the stadium. Yeah, the, the, yeah. yeah football and, and, stadium. And, and, and you take Sci Ride, and the car sits there <laughs> until the day before the game, and then all of a sudden the car don't start. Right. And you have to move it. Yeah, exactly. Do you tow it, or do you wait for campus to tow it? <laughs> Which is cheaper. All right, exactly. so get your battery checked. There you That's go. Number exactly. one, okay. Uh, number two, and, and I just read a, an article in the business record yesterday. They're talking about uh, gasoline prices mm -hmm. were expected to go up another. 30 to 40 cents as we roll into fall mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're back to tire pressure oh you know, true okay one tire that's five pounds low on air which you can't visually see 
will cost you 10% of your fuel mileage. That's amazing. But That's an even, amazing number. So, so, the, so there's a financial reason in gasoline to, to have your tires inflated, but even more importantly is a low tire out on the interstate, you know, you know, these kids are driving the car around Des Moines. They might, you know, venture down to Indianola or something like that. But all of a sudden, now they're getting on the, the interstate and they're going to drive for a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. That low tire, uh, the, if a tire is low on air, it builds up heat faster and it can't dissipate the heat. And that heat is what what builds up in the tire and causes it to to explode or to fail. Mm -hmm. So a low tire is going to blow out eventually if you drive on it long enough on the interstate. So just check the tire pressure. It's, and, it's that easy. And what's a good idea as far as instead of putting air in the thing? Oh, great lead in, Jason. But oh. I'll <laughs> nitrogen. Yeah. Yeah, inflate it with nitrogen. Uh, it'll yeah, it'll last longer in the tires and you'll get better fuel mileage. By the way, we still need to do the bicycle tire experiment with that. We see. do need to do, we should have done that for rag. Yeah, that would have made more sense. Yeah, see if, yeah. see if, see if it that. took less calories to pedal the bike. <laughs> that's right, that's what it's all about. <laughs> all right, next on the list. Lights. Lights, this lights. is very important. It is very important. Now, some people might have some lights that uh, they may have replaced with some uh, substandard or not, uh, you know, original equipment manufacturer lights like these here. Oh yeah. Okay, now yeah, the D now, cell light. Now those look nice because there's a spotlight. There's one that shows you where you're turning, but you wouldn't recommend that, would you? And, and this is live footage out in the KCWI parking lot. <laughs> we want people to know that. That's Jackie's turn. Hey. <laughs> you Maybe. wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> no, okay. no, wouldn't recommend that. But but you know there, there's there's multiple reasons to, to replace light but probably the most important is out of safety mm -hmm. and and it, it's it's getting dark earlier uh, it, it doesn't get as light in the morning that's going to happen as we roll into the into the fall and go out now in the evening turn the car turn all the lights on on the car and walk around it make sure they all work I mean I mean if there's a tail light out or even a license plate light I mean replace that stuff and, and have them all working uh, and then the other thing to check that a lot of people don't check push the hazard button. Make sure oh, the four ways work. Okay. Exactly, because if you do have problems, when do you want to find out those didn't work? <laughs> when you're sitting alongside the interstate? Side of I-80. Yeah, that's something you never use. <laughs> right. And, and just because the brake light or the tail light lights up doesn't mean they're going to work. They've got their own fuse, they've got a flasher, the switch. switch. Exactly, yep. exactly. Um, and, then, and then a couple more things here. One, uh, find a local resource. Uh, before your kid goes to college, if they're going to go to school in Iowa City, th there's a chance they're going to have a problem with the car. It's not going to sure. start, dome light's going to be left on, whatever the situation is. When do you want to spend an hour scrambling to find somebody? And, and you don't have time to research and find out if it's the right place. Mm -hmm. um, so, so do your research in advance. You know, your, your, your child's going to, going to school in a, in a different city. Okay, here's where you go for emergency medical care. Here's where you would go for emergency dental care. Here's where you go if the car has a problem. Now, do you have an East of Des Moines Auto Pros? <laughs> no, no, no we, okay. but, 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 but I, I mean, uh, just, just through the, the, the couple of years that I've done this, um, I, I do have friends that, that have good, reputable shops. In so if, if somebody is going, say they're going to the University of Iowa, and they call you, you can recommend somebody in, in Iowa City? I've got the guy. He's, he's got a guy. I, I got he's a guy. Got a guy. I got connections. <laughs> it is good guy. to know, because well, when you're a student, is. sometimes you can feel taken advantage of, because mm -hmm. they're like, oh, it's just a student. I can you, you know, charge uh, him more. Lori or, that works here at the television station, her, her daughter had a battery problem in Iowa City, and then they called me, and I told them where to take it, and they checked it out, and, and, and the guy called her daughter, and she said, just call Ron, he's our car guy. <laughs> I mean, like, like I was going to make the financial decision to fix the car, you know. But, but I mean, that, that did make me feel good. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, I, I mean, and, and, and most, you know, people in the auto repair business, I mean, they have access to, to, to knowing who's good and, and where to go in other cities. Or you can always rely on, on AAA, go to mm -hmm. Google, read the reviews. Mm -hmm. You know, not everybody's going to have all five-star reviews. If they right. do, that's a red flag. Um, but if they've got all one-star reviews, that's a red flag too. As well, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then the last thing that I, I want to talk about here is um, cell phones, um, and, and that's something that that uh, you know people rely a little bit less on the reliability of the car because they think, okay, well my kid has a cell phone. If they have a problem, they can call me. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what happens when, I, I mean, people do more than just make calls on cell phones. They're surfing the internet, they're listening to their music, and all of a sudden the phone's almost dead, and the alternator fails in the car, or something electrical goes bad in the car, and they can't plug it in and charge it. Now what? Exactly. So now, now the cell phone doesn't work, the car's dead, and they have problems. But wait, there's an alternative. Da -da -da -da. Companies make uh, simple backup power supplies 
for cell phones. And this particular one, this one's made by Rayovac, um, and I've used it, I know it works. It, it charges off a USB port, and then there's an on-off switch, so you can turn it off so it'll store the power in there. Okay. Um, the instructions say it's, it's good for up to six months without being used. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't tested that. Uh, it, it claims to give you 45 minutes worth of, of talk, talk time, time. Uh, which means it won't, uh, but it, it, will, <laughs> it, it will probably at least give you that call you need. Um, so you just simply charge it up on, on the USB, and then it's as easy as plugging it into your phone. So you keep that in your car? Yeah, keep it charged up, throw it in the glove box. You plug it into your phone. And, and you know you're good. Yeah, you, you got that, that emergency call that you can make. Um, people look and say, oh, well, I got an iPhone. Well, that's not a problem because somehow. There's another thing. Bum, -da -da, da -da 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 -da. Oh, there you go. It's so it's universal. In. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and um, we've got these at Westside Auto Pros. We, we sell them. Um, and, and I think they run like 16 or 17 oh, that's bucks. All, oh, yeah. Under 20 bucks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cheap, cheap insurance. Okay. So that would be something to consider for your cell phone, um, as well as uh, put the contacts in there uh, yeah. for, for your son or daughter and, and put them under, you, you know, maybe the, the first name is car. So they, they know that car towing or, mm -hmm. or, or car jump start or car battery mm -hmm. or car mechanic. I mean, I mean what, whatever you need to have in their car insurance guide. Something logical. Exactly. Yeah. And, and put them all under a, a primary uh, prefix. And then also maybe throw a list in the glove box because phones break, they get lost, whatever, mm -hmm. they'll have that stuff. Yeah, Perfect. that's huge because I, when I broke down various times, I'm like, Mom, she's like, I'm in Iowa, you're in Florida, what do you expect me to do? Exactly. <laughs> you know, you, you need to have the places that are located where you're at that sure. can actually Great sure. idea. Help. Sure, sure. Great but you got to have that conversation first. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. everybody chills out and figures out what to do. All right, so if you're going somewhere around the area and you want uh, a car place in case your, your, your son or daughter is going out of town, call Ron the Gar Car Guy, he'll tell you where his buddies work. Or you can go to Ron the Car Guy. Ask around the car guy.com and ask that way message. too, and yeah. he'll take care of you. All right, good job again, man. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Take it easy. We'll be right back. This is great day.